Hello YouTube and welcome to What The Math. In today's video I'm going to be taking a look at a few video games that you can actually use in a classroom. Now as a math teacher I was actually quite interested in this because there's a few math games here and this is in a website made by something called Glass Lab Games which is basically a company that produces these free video games you can use in class and they're all meant for education and they're all kind of uh, basically it's educational games, games that were produced to be educational. Now they currently have five free games, there's one called ArguBot, or ArguBot Academy that is, uh, and Argument Wars, these are kind of similar in concept and I'm going to take a look at them in the next video. Um, there's also one called SimCity EDU, which is actually something I'm really excited about, but this one I'll also will be in a future video. And there are two games that are mathematical, there's one called Slice Fractions, and one called Game Over Gopher. I'm going to be taking a look at these two games today because uh, I am a math teacher and I wanted to start with math. Now this one is for grades 2 to 4 and this one is for grades 2 to 7. I've actually already played them and I kind of know what they are like but I would like to take a look at them from scratch as well. There's actually a new game that is coming out soon as well, it's called Was It Trouble? And this one is also, or will be also a math game. It's developed by Brainquake. And this game is actually available for free on um, on a mobile, uh, on basically on mobile devices, on uh, smartphones. Uh, and this is a, a, f a game that teaches you fractions. And it's actually, it's going to be available on this website as well. Absolutely free. So these two games are developed by different people. And let's just start with the one called Game Over Go Gopher. But before I, I start with the game, I wanted to actually quickly take a look at this website. Now, this is not just a website. It's actually a class management system as well. Kind of similar to um, things like, what are those websites called? Anyway, I forgot the term that is used for them, but it's basically game, uh, websites like Edmodo um, and Schoology where essentially you're controlling the entire classroom um, from a website. So here you can basically sign up and create a class, you can invite your students, you can keep track of their progress. Uh, if there's a student that's kind of uh, in trouble, you can have an intervention, a scary word for uh, website is based on games, but okay, anyway, moving on, uh, and so uh, so on and so forth, but because it's a relatively new website, they don't really have that many games to select from, and also only, um, basically only social studies and math is um, currently available to you, and in terms of math, there's really very limited topics, but that's uh, that's a negative I'm going to be discussing in more detail later on. So let's talk. Let's start with the game over golfer. So all of these are browser based, so you can basically play um, play these games using a browser, and they're all based on Flash. So you actually need to have a a laptop or uh, a device that is able to play Flash, and that means that you cannot play these on um, on an iPad, unfortunately, because iPad no longer supports Flash. I don't think it will actually work on an iPad. I haven't tried, but I don't think it will. It may work on a Mac, actually it should work on a Mac, but definitely not an iPad. So anyway, uh, let's start. Yes, music, awesome. Uh, it's supported by NCTM and other uh, American math and sciences associations that are basically pro education. And this game has a very kind of a simple yet child friendly storyline. This uh, carrot is being abducted by angry golfers and they're basically trying to eat it. I finished the first level and this is, I'm gonna show you the second level, is uh, I'm, we're gonna try to make it to this challenge just to see what it's like. But basically there's 14 levels currently, I'm not sure if there's more after this, but uh, what this game does is it, uh, yeah, chapter one, first contact and there's this Rambo looking carrot, R Ram carrot, or Campbell? That makes no sense. Anyway, so basically this game teaches you how to use coordinate planes. It goes through positive and negative points, it teaches you everything about the points, and by the time you finish the game you should be familiar with both the co coordinate planes and all of the um, axes, all of the um, terms used um, related to coordinate planes, including... Oh my god, what's going on? Place ruby drills at correct coordinates. Okay, um, oh okay, so yeah, as I place these thingies, these drills at correct coordinates, it awards me points. If I place it in the wrong coordinate, it uh, does not give me points. Now this is a this is an actual game. It's actually very similar to many mobile games, and specifically this this is a type of a game that's called tower defense, where you have a central unit or I guess a carrot that you try to protect from these 
attacking monsters. And um, as you progress through different waves of enemies, you collect more um, more money, more rubies in this case. You can upgrade your weapons, or in this case, it's a it's a carrot launcher, and um, basically create more. Uh, more defense for your for your main carrot base thingamajig. This thing I think it actually just uh, collects rubies for me as well, which means I can possibly place another. There we go. Oh, oh, never mind, never mind, never mind. I cannot place anymore. Oh, he's gonna attack my carrot. Okay, so basically this is how the game works. It's very simple. Um, this is really based um, off of many successful. Oh no, he's gonna attack my carrot. Oh, horror. He took a bite, a uh, huge chunk out of my carrot. Um, basically, this is based off uh, many um, really successful tower defense games. So, um, definitely something that uh, many students will actually like playing. And because of the cutesy graphics and cutesy music and all that, it may actually be quite popular as well. Um, so, this is what this gameplay is like. So, I can actually show you... Um, let's actually advance the levels and let me show you some of the further levels. Oh, and at the end of every um, major level, there's always a boss. Basically, it's the golfer with a little crown on his head. And usually, they're a little bit more difficult to defeat. But these games are not very easy. Now, the thing that I do not like about this is... Well, really, this is my problem with a lot of the educational games is that... Yes, it is a game. And basically, I am not really learning math here. I'm learning how to play this game really well. Now, it does have the mathematical additions to it. So there's a coordinate planes, there's the axes that were actually visible before. Oh no, oh no, oh no, my carrot. Oh, let it go. Um, but the problem is that it's it's very minimal in terms of contribution to math. So this is not game-based learning, um, which is basically what I'm a big proponent of. Uh, that's, you know, using games like Minecraft or any other successful games to um, introduce various concepts. But how uh, this is basically, this is the um, other spectrum. This is the educational games. Um, and a lot of them usually are not very successful. Now, this one is marginally successful because it's kind of fun and there's a bit of a coordinate plane involved. But really, this is just one topic. Oh, yes, it does teach you quadrants. So if your students are struggling with quadrants, this is probably one of the better ways of teaching them these um, particular terms. So quadrants and coordinates. But unfortunately, that's all it does. It really doesn't teach you anything else. Um, so I'm actually not even going to get to that challenge part because this is the limit of this game. Um, now, obviously, it's not a bad thing, but unfortunately, it's really only one topic. And, you know, normally, in a, in a normal, sort of a regular classroom, this would be maybe um, a week of class um, of study. So you can obviously introduce this to your class um, as sort of a um, uh, formative assessment or possibly even um, help struggling students if they're not particularly strong with coordinate planes. Um, now, let's take a look at the other one, and this one is fractions. Now, fractions is something that a lot of my students, even my uh, students in higher grades, do not like. They are really upset with the fractions because they weren't really taught well to them. And so let's see if this is actually um, uh, good at teaching them those concepts. Ooh, okay, and here, there we go. There is our first um, problem with the, this website. And basically, there's an error, and I've actually had this last week as well when I tried to make this video. So this game, unfortunately, does not work. Um, I've actually, um, I did try to send them an email, and they still haven't fixed this. So this is one of the problems with um, the current uh, design of this website, is that not everything works yet. It's still a very new sort of um, website, still kind of, grow it's just it's still trying to grow in size uh, but anyway so basically yeah once this game works I'll, I'll take a look at it again i'm going to take a look at SimCity actually um uh but yes yeah, so this this game right here is something i'm looking forward to this is probably one of the better ways of teaching fractions uh was it if you haven't played this on um, on on a, on a smart device or on a mobile device is actually a relatively good game to use to teach fractions to your students um it does Ooh, I can actually download it as well. Ooh, there's a client. Anyway, I'm going to try to play without the client. Uh, and so, yeah, was it is definitely something I'm, I'm going to review when it comes out. Okay, before playing the game, please make sure that you've already downloaded some city to your computer. Okay, I should probably download it first. And while I'm waiting for my download to complete, this is actually quite a heavy download. It's one gigabyte. Um, 
what I wanted to do is briefly explain what this game is about. So this is this is actually a little bit closer to what I really believe in, which is game-based learning. And specifically, it basically uses this very, very, very famous game called SimCity and introduces a lot of educational concepts, specifically working with things like environment and um, uh, what you might call it, e management, city management, city development, and so on and so forth. Now, this is these are concepts that you may not be able to successfully introduce into your regular curriculum, but if you were to modify your curriculum, you could easily throw this game in and students would actually have a lot of um, fun both developing various tas tasks and completing various missions and also um, answering a variety of questions that could essentially uh, be, uh, you know, it could essentially fit into your curriculum. Now this, will, this is more of a social sciences and humanities type of a game, but you can always use it in other classrooms like English. There's probably a little bit of math in there as well. You can basically combine this as a kind of a um, uh, cross-curricular activity where you can basically use the idea of uh, city building and waste management and environmental um, problems and so on and so forth to try to solve these problems using a variety of sciences and variety of um, subjects. So my game is about to finish downloading and once it's done I'm going to take a look at its design, its layout and basically give you, give you my opinion about it. All right, so let's test this game. There's four different missions available to us. School is in, we need jobs, pollution problems, and it's complicated. Let's do this one, pollution problems. Uh, okay, so it's asking me to launch the application. And just like that, I'm being thrown into the game and asked to do something. So actually, <laughs> wow, there's a lot of stuff going on. I have no idea where to even start. What's my mission? Uh, welcome to Sierra Madre. This city has a problem with high air pollution. Find out how to lower pollution and keep the pollution level optimal. You have 10 minutes? What? Can you avoid power blackouts? No, I can't. I don't know how to... What? Huh? All right, this needs a tutorial or something. Uh, I may have actually started the wrong mission. I should have just started with the first. Uh, but yeah, so this looks like an actual game. So this is this is if you've never played a SimCity game, it's basically where you manage the entire city and your job is to try to uh, you know maintain happiness, build various um, things that are necessary for your population. And in this case I have to maintain pollution level. I do not know how. I'm going to actually possibly uh, no I, I can figure this out. All right, so there's there's actually a few buttons here. This one shows me a power map, and this one shows me the pollution map. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of pollution going on, and all you hear, all I hear at least, is basically people coughing. Happiness map. This is actually pretty awesome. Um, this is definitely one of the more interesting games that this uh, website has to offer for free, because this is something that I would totally, totally use in my class if I were to teach these particular topics topics of pollution topics of um you know management resource management and so on and so forth so actually all right let's uh let's figure this out what do i need to do here to solve this problem all right so this is a ridiculously complicated mission i kind of played around with this a little bit just to see what i can do and what i can do i i can build things i can actually build um clean power plants which produce um you know, no pollution, but basically uh, cost a lot of money. And I can then use um, my, or I can then disable my coal power plants, which actually produce extreme air pollution. So let's actually turn it off. Uh, and this will in turn uh, reduce my air quality index. And I have to get to um, AQI of 100. And I'm only at 145 right now. There's actually uh, various things you can do. Uh, and th this is actually an entire city that's basically sort of, you know, has its own life, has its own uh, dynamics, but here, if I try to shut down certain things, like for example, if I shut down this donut filling factory, can I even do that? Can I shut it down? Oh, maybe I can't, okay, so I can't really shut this down. Uh, but if I shut down certain things that make people happy, they will get, start getting really, really sad. Uh, and as I shut down my power plant, uh, my energy levels have decreased, so now there's not enough energy in the city, and people are basically getting really upset with me. So the power in the city is dangerously low. Blackout. Excellent. Your power deficit is 23 megawatts. So it didn't go so well. Let's actually try this again with a much simpler mission because this is actually relatively cool. All right, so this is actually mission number one. And even this mission is relatively difficult. Now here, my mission is to basically... It's called school is in. It's actually 
I need to build bus stops for students to get to school efficiently. I only have 10 minutes. Are you kidding me? Uh, okay, I consider myself to be relatively good at games, but this is just extreme. Uh, data, what? Click on, oh, okay, I see. Oh, this is nice. Look at all these awesome bars and graphs. That's totally usable in math. Now, so far, I, I do like this. I do like how, what they're trying to do with these games, but my concern is this. One is that there's just not enough tutorial for people and students and teachers that have never played these games. And even for people that have played these games, that would be me, I still am confused. I have no idea where to even start. Uh, number two is that there is a really large download, and so this is not actually a browser game. This is a game that you need to download and install on your computer. Not all computers will be able to play this either, so this, this is definitely not for Chromebooks or any other simpler computers. You basically need to have a very powerful computer for this to work. Oh, there we go, grade school. I have no money? What do you mean I have no money? Oh, I need to build a bus stop, right? Uh, okay. Where is my school? Grade school is here. I need to build bu bus stops. I think that, oh, here we go, happiness. Yay, everyone can go to school. School's for everyone. So this is a little bit easier than before. Uh, slightly simpler version of SimCity that I remember playing a long time ago. But basically, yeah, so this is how the game works. You basically complete these missions and this is a much, much simpler, more user-friendly, or at least it tries to be user-friendly version of SimCity that uh, has been popular for many, 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 many years. Uh, now, um, I do like where this website is going, where this company is actually going, and I do appreciate their attempts at um, basically making these games free, accessible, and... Um, huh? What? No, no more happiness. Uh, accessible and also... Um, basically usable in class, but there's still so many things they have to complete before this can be actually successfully used in classrooms. Now, this is actually good, this is all fun. Unfortunately, um, for teachers that may not be familiar with these games, it will be very difficult to implement them in class. Um, okay, I'm gonna say I'm done. Yeah, sure, I'm done. Give me my badge. Uh, 200 kids were not enrolled. Okay, uh, so yeah, these missions are a little bit too hard. Even for a seasoned gamer such as myself, this is actually relatively hard. Also, the game does have a tendency to crash. I've actually already experienced a crash when I clicked on all done last time. Um, it accidentally crashed my game. But anyway, so far this is actually the best that they have to offer because SimCity is usually an expensive game. This one, however, is available for free and we have four missions already. So this is SimCity EDU and it is available on their website for free. And you can use this in your class. Okay, so I think uh, this video is getting a little bit too long, so I'm going to pause this here and continue to the next part and talk about some of these other games. Actually, there's two more games we have to take a look at, and maybe a third one when it actually is fixed. So, thank you for watching, please subscribe, and game you later. Bye-bye.